I don't know. I'll turn this on and then it will look cute. Ah, oh, you can barely see it. It looks cute. This isn't the point of the video. Okay. Hi guys. So normally I talk about like quite happy things on my channel. Um, I just do makeup looks or talk about films that I like. But today there's just something that I really feel that I need to talk about that I just can't get out of my head and I think it's good to give your opinions on things that are good and on things that are bad. So this is a bit of a different video for me, so if you're not feeling it then I totally understand. Thank you for clicking on it anyway uh, and I'll see you in the next one where I'm possibly talking about something that you might be more interested in. So. A lot of people have been talking about Ted Bundy recently for two reasons. The first is that the confession tapes of Ted Bundy have been released on Netflix. I'm not sure if they've been out before, whether they've been heard before. The second being that this film, which I wanted to be in my background but I can't make it work, Extremely Wicked, Shockingly Evil and Vile, uh, which is the longest film title ever by the way, unnecessary. That's kind of the point of this video is I am going to be talking about how I feel about the film in general. I know obviously that I haven't seen it, but I'm just going to talk about from the trailers marketing, the casting. This is no shade to Zac Efron. I absolutely love Zac Efron. He's one of my favourite actors. Um, I've followed his career ever since High School Musical, who hasn't? While I'm glad that he's branching out and that he's going to be doing a role that he's never done before. I think it would be really interesting to see him play a villain. I just... There are two things that I'm worried about. And the first is that is already happening, um, is that people are going to immediately romanticise him and sexualise him because he's Zac Efron. He's, he's someone that people know and people love and people automatically do romanticise about. His target market is like teenage girls. And the fact that it's teenage girls that he killed and did very awful things to, um, it really does concern me that there are going to be people watching that film um, that are younger than me and are still kind of finding their feet in the world. And I'm not, I'm not saying this nastily to teenagers, you know, everyone's finding their feet in the world, but especially teenagers and what they find attractive, what they don't, and the fact that someone who has always played these sort of heroic characters, these very charming characters, um, to then jump and play someone so evil that has a lot of interaction with teenage girls is really quite concerning to me. The point I'm trying to make is that I'm worried about how people are going to receive it. Very similar to how um, A Fault in Our Stars happened, there were teenage there were teenage people that I remember seeing were commenting saying I wish I had cancer so that I could meet someone like Augustus, you know, and I know you're thinking, well, those are just some silly people that are naive. It was loads of people, it wasn't just one comment, it was loads and loads of people that really romanticised the illness, romanticised everything about it, romanticised the support groups. Um, similarly to how Fifty Shades of Grey was received, um, a very, very toxic relationship that I could probably do a whole other video on, but because it was someone attractive and someone appealing, uh, people started to take that the wrong way and thought, oh, I want someone to treat me like that. And that is what worries me with Zac Efron playing Ted Bundy. I get that in a way that that's not exactly the film's problem, but I don't understand why the film had to be made in the first place. Camera, can you stay with me please? I just don't see the point. I don't see why it's got to be made, why, you know, for the families, because this wasn't actually that long ago in the grand scheme of things, why the family should be forced to watch a, you know, an adaptation of how they lost someone so close to them. That just, I mean, and, and obviously I don't know if that's going to happen or not, I don't know how deep they're going to go into the crimes or whether they're going to focus entirely on the case or his escape, I, d I don't know. I know that there are some films that have to be made, there are some stories that have to be told, but I think constantly bringing back Ted Bundy as this charming person that, you know, wooed so many people. I really do urge you to go and watch the trailer yourself, um, I'll link it below. Because to me, it came across very Wolf of Wall Streety, a bit sort of a happy-go-lucky, you know, lovable rogue that, you know, escaped from prison and it's like, 
<clears throat> you know, it's just... And they know that people will go to it. Filmmakers make films about things that they shouldn't make films about. They do it to shock, they do it for all these reasons. This little post from Insider came up that said the director of the new Ted Bundy film has responded to claim it claims it glorifies the serial killer, saying it's a very naive and knee-jerk reaction. Before I even read it, <laughs> before I even read it, that's calling things knee-jerk reactions when you're bringing back to light someone who affected very many people, you know, disrupted the lives of 36 teenage girls. Oh, yes, people are going to have an emotive reaction, people are going to be annoyed because you are talking about someone very real, who was very evil, who doesn't deserve to have the limelight even in death that he does and I know that I watched the Netflix series I know that loads of people have watched the Netflix series that's very different because it's all from the point of view of people that worked alongside him that knew him they don't ever try to present him in a lovable way whereas already from the sort of jaunty music that you can see in the trailer from the fact that it's a lovable actor someone that many people love I get I get the whole point I get the whole thing is that he's supposed to be charming he was supposed to have misled many people I get that we already know it we don't need a film made with someone very charming to emphasize that point you know it's just Anyway, I'll read the rest of the thing. Oh, I feel like I literally just felt my brain leave the building. <laughs> I've totally lost all respect for the director now. He said, if you actually watch the movie, the last thing we're doing is glorifying him. He gets his due at the end. Duh, but we're portraying the experience of how one becomes a victim to that kind of psychopathic seduction. Oh, the rest of this interview. It, these type of movies are certainly not for everyone, but telling filmmakers there are topics that are off limits is a slippery slope. I think there should be no censoring of subject matter if it's done responsibly, and even if it's done irresponsibly, people have the right to tell any story they want to tell. That is very unsympathetic to say. Ted Bundy's mum only died four years ago, five years ago. What year are we in? If she was still around, the mums are still around of those girls. Like, you know, being like, well, you can't say that my story's off limits, I have the right to make the film that I want. Yes, you do have the right to make the film that you want, but you have to accept that there will be consequences and that people are going to be cross and people are going to have emotive reactions because it was a very real thing. You know, people don't want these things they don't want to see these things and there is the whole thing of how you manage it and to, to, for him to then say even if people tell it irresponsibly that's their right to make no it's not you know these are real people's lives i feel like i'm going round and round and round and round in circles i'm just even more furious after reading um after reading that interview <sighs> even my camera's mad. The second thing that I'm worried about is Zac Efron. <laughs> what the director said is, first of all I would never have hired Zac to play the role if he wasn't a fantastic actor. All the trade reviews say this is a career changing performance for him so from an acting standpoint he deserved it. Okay. But Bundy operated by deceiving his victims because he was good looking and charming, so who better to portray and embody that very dynamic? So the late for those of you that have seen the confession tapes, I think I'm possibly not quoting exactly what it's called, the confession tapes of Ted Bundy. Something like that. Um, you'll know that there was a lady that um was attacked and did survive the attack. Um, when she was 20 years old and she has said I don't have a problem with people watching the film as long as they understand that what they're watching wasn't a normal person. I believe that in order to show him exactly the way it is, it, it, exactly the way he was, it's not really glorifying him, it's showing him. But as I said I do worry about Zac Efron because I, there have been plenty of actors um, that have been greatly disturbed by the roles that they have played. Um, and that it has given them momentary satisfaction um, from getting the act, like they said, like it's a new acting prowess for Zac Efron, I totally get that, it's, it's a role that's completely different to what, anything he's done before and I totally get that, good for him. Could have done it with another person though that wasn't real. Um, not blaming, I'm not blaming Zac. 
maybe I am a little bit. Um, I am a little bit concerned about why you would want to play someone like that, aside from the fact that yes, it gives you the chance to completely change your, uh, you know, like Hugh Grant always played the same characters until suddenly he played Jeremy Thorpe. You know, he he's kind of branching out a little bit. I get wanting to pull yourself out of that typecasting. There are other ways to do it. There are definitely other roles that you could have chosen that aren't real people in real circumstances. I don't know whether Zac Efron is a method actor or what, but no matter what, you are getting into the mind of someone who was very evil, who did not think like a normal human being should think. And to be able to portray that person accurately, you are going to have to get into their thoughts. You are going to have to think about all of the things that they would have thought about. And it does concern me for his mental well-being. Right now, he might be thinking, oh, I'm on top of the world. You know, I've got... And I don't wish this on him at all. I don't want it to come across that way. But I, we watched, like, how Jared Leto, Leto um, got way too into his role um, and kind of couldn't break away. And similar to Heath Ledger with the Joker, um, you know, again, got too involved in the role and found it difficult to break away. But I think someone that is um, quite well known, I'm <laughs> Googling at the same time, quite well known that has had a um, very hands-on experience with this sort of thing is uh, Misha Collins who played uh, Paul Bernardo who was um, is this the Ken and Barbie killers? but Misha Collins um, who was well known for being in Supernatural um, he played Paul Bernardo who was um, a serial killer and he portrayed him in a film called Carla because he also got his wife to help. Um, and it's all very... Is it the same director? No, okay. Obviously the process of filmmaking, it takes a very long time um, for a film to come into fruition, for it to be edited, for it to be filmed, lines to be learnt, etc. And um, Misha Collins has actually said himself that he doesn't want people to watch it. Um, he especially doesn't want people to watch it for him because it was his most disturbing film ever to film. He said he saw a side to himself that he never expected. He said, while he believes everyone has a dark side within themselves, most people will never see it. Channeling Bernardo brought that side out and he absolutely hated it. It was only after the movie that he lost his those feelings of hatred and sadism. Whoa, almost not my tripod over. And, you know, th there's more into it that the director was very creepy and kind of said that he found some of the very disturbing scenes um, sexy, which is not good and not the way to handle things, but we don't know. <laughs> we don't know what goes on on these sets. We don't know why this man, why this director wants to make a film about Ted Bundy, but I just think, you know, I mean, Misha Collins obviously does a lot of very disturbing stuff in Supernatural too. Um, I don't personally watch it, but I, I know vaguely and roughly about some of the plot points and you know for him to say that he was very disturbed and that he had all of these feelings within him that is what worries me for Zac Efron. I worry about what type of fans are going to come out of the woodwork you know there are still Ted Bundy fans that um you know sort of glorify him and are attracted to him for some reason and the crimes that he did you know you will always get people like that but I'm worried that people like that will come out of the woodwork and new versions of these fans you know fans that have carried on from the 80s they will forever be there but that a new wave of these unnerving fans are going to come out of nowhere and making this video isn't going to change anything it's not going to stop the film from being promoted but all I can say is that I've said my piece now, I've got it out, um, but I just really do urge you guys that if you are going to watch the film, please be careful um, with how you receive it, please do try and pull yourself back from the fact that it's Zac Efron, if you do like Zac Efron, um, remember the fact that it was very real stories, um, it was very real circumstances and it was real people that this happened to. You know, I think a lot of my viewers are kind of my age, a lot of my viewers, my 119, thank you very much, um, viewers, um, 
are people around my age um so just be careful be careful with what you watch be careful with what you take in um it's all very well educating yourself totally get that i mean i watched the confessions myself i get that just don't be pulled in by what film can do and how film can make someone look and remember that it was a very awful person that did these things and yeah, pray for Zac Efron too. <laughs> anyway, that was a bit of a depressing video, wasn't it guys? But um, I hope you liked seeing this more sort of emotive side of me, seeing something a bit more emotional, talking about film, which I love talking about film, and I also like talking about crime, I just wish that it wasn't this criminal that I was talking about. And I get that you're probably thinking, oh, you've just been saying all about how people shouldn't be bringing Ted Bundy into conversation all the time. So this is just something that I feel needed to be said. Um, probably nobody will care, it obviously won't change anything. But I feel better for getting it off my chest and talking about it because it's something that's really disturbed me even more since I watched The Confessions. Um, yeah. So thank you guys so much. Please like and subscribe and leave me a comment down below if there's anything else that you would like me to talk about, any films that you'd like me to talk about. I am going to try and talk about film and TV shows a lot more on this channel because um, it is my love aside from makeup. So yeah. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you next time. Bye!